Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 1050, College Algebra for students at Southern Utah University. As usual, I'm your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldheim. In this first video for lecture three, we're going to talk some more about functions, right? But with a lot of the basics of functions now out of the way, we're going to start getting into some more of the nitty gritty algebra side of the things. And I hate to use such a negative term here because algebra itself uh, is a pretty impressive tool to help us solve many mathematical and, you know, even non-mathematical problems. Uh, but in the previous two lectures, as we were in section 1.1 about fundamentals of functions, we were focusing on, well, the fundamentals of functions, and we avoided the use of real any real algebra so that we really could focus on the function fundamentals themselves and not get distracted by the algebraic part of things, which is important, but a separate part. Uh, algebraic representation is only one way to represent a function. And so now we're going to uh, break that convention and we're going to start using these algebraic functions. So when we talk about an algebraic function, what we mean is it'll be a function described algebraically, typically of the form f of x equals some type of algebraic expression uh, right there. And so evaluation of the function will be, well, your algebraic expression will have some variable in it, probably like an x usually, and you'll, re you'll replace that x value with the number at hand, and that's how we evaluate functions algebraically. So let's consider the quadratic equation, the quadratic function f of x equals 2x squared minus 3x. Function evaluation, like if we want to do f of 3 here, what this means is everywhere in the equation for the formula, you see an x, you replace that with a 3. So you get 2 times 3 squared minus 3 times 3. Each of those x's was turned into a 3. And then we didn't follow the arithmetic calculations here. 3 squared is a 9. 3 times 3 is likewise a 9. 2 times 9 is 18. 18 take away 9 is therefore 9. And so then this algebraic statement tells us that the function evaluated at 3 gives us a 9. So this function will send the number 3 to the number 9. And that's how it does it, and it does it using the formula provided. Um, if we were to do f of 1, it's the same basic idea. We'll take 2 times 1 squared minus 3 times 1. 1 squared is, is 1, times that by 2 is 2. 3 times 1 is 3. You get 2 minus 3, which is negative 1. And that's then the evaluation of the function. That's all there is really to it. Now, one nice thing about these algebraic functions is that we can evaluate the function at specific numbers in its domain, like 3 and 1, but we can also evaluate these functions at other expressions themselves. Like, we could look at f of negative x. What does that mean? f of negative x would mean you're going to take the function f of x from above, and everywhere you see an x, you're going to instead substitute in a negative x. So we get 2 times negative x squared minus 3 times negative x. And so uniformly, everywhere you see an x, you're going to replace it with a negative x. Now, I would recommend putting parentheses around the negative x so that we get the correct order of operations. For example, when it comes to the negative x squared here, uh, negative x squared means negative x times negative x. That'll be a double negative, and hence it'll actually turn into a positive. Uh, we end up with a 2x squared. And likewise, we get this negative 3 and negative x. That's, again, another double negative. So we get 2x squared plus 3x. And this is the function of value at negative x. Now, you might wonder, why would we evaluate the function of negative x? I thought we put numbers inside the machine and it spits out a number, right? Well, there are going to be reasons why one would want to plug in an algebraic expression. For example, this is a little bit of foreshadowing here, but if one wanted to reflect say, the function across the y-axis, replacing x with negative x does exactly that. And we'll talk about that at some future date here. If we evaluate the function at h, f of h here, that just means replace each x with an h. You get 2x, uh, sorry, 2h squared, replace the h for the x, 2h squared minus 3h, and that's all there is to it. If you evaluate, I never put a box around the other answer, if you evaluate the function at some algebraic expression, the output will be an algebraic expression. <clears throat> For which case, we can do something like that. All we did was just change the variable name. But there'll be times where we want to change the variable name. We might want to change from 
um, X to H. And reasons like that will become more clear much, much later on. Um, at this moment, we're playing the Karate Kid, for which Mr. Miyagi is telling us to, to wax the car, wax on, wax off. And out of context, it gets a little bit confusing while we're doing that. But all of these have justifications. And at the moment, we're just practicing sort of our, our muscle memory, but not necessarily with our physical muscles, but with our brain here. Just practicing our algebraic skills. There will be times where when we have an algebraic formula like f of x that we want to do algebraic operations onto it, but not necessarily evaluating the function at some value x, but what if we actually want to operate on the formula itself? Three times f of x means we take three times the formula 2x squared minus 3x, in which case I would recommend at this moment we distribute the three onto both pieces, in which case we then get 6x squared minus 9x. Uh, so we can multiply it by 3, right? What does it mean to do negative f of x? That just means times negative 1 times 2x squared minus 3x. Again, you would distribute the negative sign and get negative 2x squared plus 3x. Switch the sign there. So we can start doing operations on the outside of the function. We can also do some on the inside of the function. Like, let's go back and let's replace x with 3x. What that means is we'll take 2. Instead of an x, we'll replace it with a 3x put parentheses around it to make sure we get the scope correct, and then minus three times three X. And then we simplify this thing algebraically. Three X squared means three X times three X. We get two times nine X squared, and we'll get minus nine X. And so times the two by the nine, and we end up with 18 X squared minus nine X. And so we get all of these evaluations in the following manner. These are things we've probably done in other algebra classes, so we're finally able to start doing them now, these algebraic functions. All right, here's another example. What if we want to substitute in for x, x plus 3, it's some binomial? Well, it's the same basic idea. We're going to replace x with x plus 3. Make sure you put parentheses around the x plus 3. It's very imperative you do it this time. You'll get negative 3 times instead of x, we get an x plus 3. That's what it means to evaluate at x plus 3. And then the only thing I would recommend here is maybe simplify it, I guess. I mean, it's, it's good in the way it is, but if we were trying to combine some like terms and such, you're going to have to FOIL out the x plus 3. And so by the usual FOIL method, what we mean here is x plus 3 squared is x plus 3 times x plus 3. To square something just means to multiply it by itself. And if you go through all the possible products first, x squared, outside 3x, inside 3x, uh, plus the last terms 9. You do all the possible FOILs like this. Combining like terms, we would end up with, well, 2 times, we still have the 2 from before, 2 times x squared plus 6x plus 9. And then we're also going to distribute the 3 right here, so we end up with a negative 3x minus 9. Make sure the negative sign comes with the negative 3 when you distribute it. So you get a negative 3x and a negative 9. Uh, then I would distribute the 2 onto this part right here, in which case we get 2x squared plus 12x plus 18. And then we have the minus 3x minus 9. Uh, so we're going to combine some like terms. It's like we are on Facebook. We're going to hit that like button. 12x minus 3x. We're also going to take 18 minus 9. And so in the end, this function when evaluated x plus 3 gives us 2x squared plus 9x, 12 minus 3, and then 18 minus 9 is likewise 9. And so f of x plus 3 can simplify to be the quadratic expression 2x squared plus 9x plus 9. And so it might not exactly be obvious why, but when it comes to algebraic functions, we can evaluate them at numbers, but we can also evaluate them at various different algebraic expressions. So these will all become clear later on why in the world would we want to do something like this. We're going to see in the not too distant future that f of negative x is exactly what we want to do if we want to reflect across the y-axis. Uh, negative f of x will do a reflection across the x-axis. Uh, f of 3x will do some type of horizontal compression by a factor of 3. And then 3 f of x will be some type of vertical stretch by a factor of 3. f of x plus 3 is going to be if we want to shift the graph to the left by 3. We're going to learn all about these. And this just gives you some of the reasons why I would do this. There are others than this, just to kind of give you some idea. At the moment, wax on, wax off, Daniel-san. We're going to practice these skills and apply them in the not-too-distant future.